Hey guys, I'm James, this is Mostly Helpful, and today we're going to be talking about Mini R56 brake pad warning sensors. I didn't change them recently, so I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Let's get to it. So about a couple of months ago, I changed the brakes and pads on this Mini R56 Cooper on a 2010, and I did front and rear, and I thought, when I looked at the brake pad warning sensors, that they were absolutely fine, so I refitted them. I hadn't been to BMW or wherever you get your parts and bought replacement sets. But unfortunately, what that means is you can't then reset the indicator in the display that gives you your warning about your brake pad wear. Let me show you what the normal process for doing that is and why it's not working in this case. So under normal circumstances, to reset that indicator, you turn the ignition on. As you can see here in the UK, it's cold, hence the hat. And then 1400 miles is an indication of, the, of where my pad sensors are at. Then it's a case of pressing the button at the end of the uh, indicator stalk here to get it into the right uh, set info mode. And then press and hold that for a few seconds to get it into the menu. Then we go through check, we go through service, service info, and then we press and hold this button here. It's telling me my brake fluid is due later this year. Let's get ourselves. So here's our brake pad warning. And then press and hold that. Press it again to reset. Now what would normally happen is if you'd got your proper power, uh, wear sensors new fitted, that would then go back to 37,000 miles. And as you can see, it's not resetting. And that's because I haven't fitted new sensors. So let's get on, do that job, and then come back and make sure that that resets properly. So with the wheel off, as you can see, here's the nice new disc, done about 500 miles, I guess. So really, very nice and new. And here is our wear sensor. So that's the wear sensor that I reused. And then it threads all the way back in and behind this cover. So what we need to do is remove this, get to the connector, pull this old one out, and then replace with our nice new one that's still in the cup. First thing to do then is remove this cover. Most of those uh, holes are filled with these sort of removable clips, just a Phillips screwdriver. But there's one up the top here which needs one of these. It's a T27, sorry, a T30. No, no, it's, that's not the one. That one, a T27, which is a bit of an unusual size. Anyway, I'm sure you could get to these from below because what you then find is round here in the back is the connector. That's the ABS connector, the blue one. And the white one that's just behind it, that's slightly obscured, is the brake wear sensor. There it is, the white one. So we just need to undo that, pull that sensor out and get it swapped over. Here's that cable now removed from the car. Thing happened, I, I bought both front and rear and the guy in the dealer said he couldn't remember which one was the uh, for the front and which one's for the rear. What I've worked out is that the front is a lot shorter than the rear. So if you've got a short one and a long one, short one goes to the front, long one goes to the rear. You've got your connector is identical at this end. And let me just show you the difference between the old unit and the new one. If we have a look down here, you can see where, although the old one looks still fairly substantial, it's clearly worn a bit of it away. And that is clearly what's telling the computer that it was time to replace the brakes, or the pads, should I say. So then it's just a case of getting this new cable into the exact same position the old one's just come out of. I'll do that and I'll show you once it's all zipped up. And when connecting these uh, uh, sensors up, what you can see in there is it, it's a particular, come on focus, there we go. It can only go in one way, and then, which is that way, there, and then it's just a, a, a press fit. And there's a clip get in. You go, and then you just squeeze it together like that and that clip clips in and then it's just a case of making sure that these rubber uh, clips are mounted to the ABS sensor wire to keep everything nice and neat and tidy. That's that cable all now rooted in nicely I've still got the end to put in which I'll show you in a second but there we go all rooted up and clipped into the existing ABS line as it was before. Uh, 
panels back, fixings in here, and again a reminder, T27 for this one. Where's it gone? Up there. That one there. And then all we have to do is get this here. Let's see that the cutout on the brake shoes is there already from when I did that job originally. And then just push in. And there we go. Inserted in so the pads ready for however long it takes to wear them down. So that is the in the UK the passenger side front and the next uh, the rear sensor is on the driver's side rear. So let's head round there and do that too. We are at the back driver's side of the car in the UK at least and then it's a similar story. We've got our sensor around here into the pads and the wire runs across the top around the back of this damper and goes in there. So what we need to do is remove this arch cover again and get access to that cable, uh, the plug, and then we can get that separated. So I figured it was better just to remove the whole you know, wheel arch liner on this one. It's just a couple, again, some of those funny clips, but nothing like a bit of consistency. No T27 this time, just a two 10 mil bolts up in the top, but they're plastic, so you need to be a bit careful with them. All right, this one I missed is a three mil, Alan, I didn't think they'd make that a T27, wouldn't they? But no. Right, there's that out of our way. Let's put that over there. You can see, let's get some light in. Is there a... Oh, oh, that's the blue ABS. And there's behind that is the white uh, sensor uh, clip for the... Uh, pad sensor is the one we want, so that's what I'm going to dive in there, unclip that, come back. So this one is a little bit more fiddly than the front, but what I've managed to do now is get that unclipped, so that's that white end, and the only thing between now and removal is that that is now zip tied up in the top here. I don't know if that's factory, I assumed on 94,000 miles this has had a set of pads before, almost certainly, so someone's done that. So just got to get in here with some side cutters. Hopefully that's someone I needed. And then out comes this one here. The end. And then ready to just disconnect it down here at the pad end. For disconnecting at the pads, what I do is just take a pair of long nose pliers, grab onto it there, and then just pull it straight out. Like that. As you can see, that one, similar to the other one, actually worn away quite a lot on the end. So getting this cable back in is actually relatively simple uh, until we get right into this corner. That is where I have just put a zip tie. So I'm just about to do that up, but it's, as you can imagine, quite fiddly. And it needs two hands. Off. Okay. Get that bit out. And then again, it's just a case of reinserting the hardware sensor into the caliper. Let's do that here. So you can see, there we go. So then push. Oh, need two hands, that's the trouble. Being said, it's going to click. It's obviously not going to click. Ah, oh, there we go. Just as I was talking, inevitably. And you can see it sits below the surface, just here. Just one final thing while that arch line is back in. Uh, just, yeah, usual, not too bad a job. Here's that sensor I've removed as well um, from this side, or from this end, should I say. And as you can see, it's uh, worn away as well on here. Phone. It's worn away there. So definitely uh, my mistake. I should have replaced these originally. Um, just didn't realise that uh, they looked okay visually, but they're obviously designed for a two-stage wear, I think. So, back into the car. And I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to start the car for this, just to um, just to be absolutely certain. Close the door. So, as before, let's get to our correct place in the system. 
press and hold that. And then through to service info, press and hold that button there. And then wait for a vehicle check. Vehicle check. Here we go. So let's go for that, press and hold. Yes, please. go and there we are 34,000 miles so we've gone from not being able to reset them to being able to reset them because of installing those new padware sensors also don't forget that because I've changed in my case I've changed front and rear I've got to reset the rears having now done the fronts so let's don't I need to remember to do that so let's do that there's that and there's the rears so what press and hold press and hold again and there we go, let's see what happens. And there we go, 37,000 on the rear. Odd that it's slightly different to the front, but there we go. And then, that's my service. And then, I should exit out of that. So there we go guys, there's that job on the R56 Mini, uh, installing padware sensors. So if you're gonna do your brakes, your discs and your pads, don't forget to buy your wear sensors. I bought mine from BMW, you can buy them I'm sure from other places. But um, also that reset procedure, if you're trying to reset with your existing wear sensors and they've been worn through partly, it won't reset correctly. Uh, once you've installed new ones, there you are, reset correctly as indeed in, in this case. As always, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you like this content. If you do, let me know. I hope you want to see more of this content. And if you do, do subscribe. And I look forward to coming to you in a new video very soon. Thanks and goodbye.